day is a fairly significant day. Uh, however you look at it, 31st of January 2020 is um, officially Brexit day. Lots of headlines in the newspapers. Yes, we did it, as you would expect from the Daily Express. A similar headline uh, in terms of sentiments from the Scottish Daily Mail. Uh, the Herald seems to say fairly neutral. Hello, goodbye. Uh, referring to when we joined the old economic community 40 odd years ago to leaving now. And the Times proving that Big Ben does still work eh, and that at that time we will officially no longer be part of Europe in terms of our trade agreements eh, and the likes. As many of you know, will know, our eh, charity works with eh, 98 different nationalities and uh, many of the young people that we work with, the families originate from countries within the, the European community and today brings a lot of uncertainty, a lot of questions, a lot of concerns for many. Others see it as bringing opportunities. Our priority is the well-being of those that we work with uh, and who work with us actually. Um, we have a number of staff again who uh, come from uh, countries within the European community and indeed one of them uh, is uh, here joining us today for this this short podcast Luna Luna a uh, Luna tell us a bit about yourself your background uh, your um, travels across uh, the country what you've found and also tell us your sentiments and feelings about brexit um so in this charity, I'm a marketing officer, uh, but before that, I used to work for companies doing communications and marketing. And part of the reason because I moved to this country is the massive crisis that affected mostly uh, southern countries in Europe. And that left Spain with 60% unemployment amongst young people, which is uh, impossible to recover in many, many generations. I don't think this is going to be sorted anytime soon. And on top of that, I had studied a master's degree. I knew how to speak three languages. I had traveled the world. I have been in, living before in Mexico. So I thought my best chance to get a job um, that gives me a fair opportunity to learn and develop professionally was coming to another country. Uh, thanks to the European Union, I came to Scotland. It was the European Union who funded my first project here with another charity called Exchange Scotland that promoted international volunteering. And that was a project for a year. And after that, I knew I had to look for another job and I decided to stay and I started working with Achieve More, which has been fantastic. Um, but yeah, like it's, for me, a day like today is really sad because I don't understand. Um, I don't think people understand how it feels to be on the other side. Um, I also feel a lot of British people haven't taken advantage of all the possibilities that European Union were providing. Uh, we as a charity have made an effort to facilitate international volunteering and working experience abroad for our young people because this can make a massive difference on your CV in the future. And especially for people who come from the private areas, these programs are perfect because they are fully funded and you can live abroad and you can experience different things uh, in another country, in another charity for free. So that is brilliant. But again, many people didn't even have the awareness that these programs existed. So yeah, it's a difficult day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very challenging day. And I think a part of that challenge is just really the unknown. There are the, the horror headlines, the, the fears of people that, uh, come 11 o'clock tonight and they're going to get a knock on the door and be told to go on the first plane back to where they came from and uh, there's, there's there's worries about trade deals and the likes but you know as, as, as you say as, as a charity we're interested in the person the individual yeah. their their sense of, of of what this means for them and their family and the concerns that they may have and from your perspective what is the responsibility of this charity to people who may feel like that I think our responsibility is to be there for those who need it the most right now. 
it's completely valid to feel afraid it's completely valid to have doubts to have questions it's completely valid to feel not welcome in this country with these kind of headlines and these kind of newspapers and i think as a charity we always stand next to our young people and our kids yes. no matter what happens we are here to tell them and guide them through all those emotions and also tell them what is best and what they can do and what is in our hands to do we are fairly confident that we can protect our young people from yes. a lot of things we can we have the, the tools but we also understand the systems uh, in place and institutions and I think that's the most important that if a young person today tomorrow this weekend is uh, struggling with all these news with all these comments they are capable of coming to us at any given moment and just talk to us and we'll do our best to be there for them and you can you can talk to us in a number of different ways obviously many of you uh, are on our social media platforms uh, personal messages where Twitter Instagram Facebook uh, and the likes ask questions, share your concerns, and you know, we we are always open to, to the young people and their families. Say uh, We would be very keen to offer any sort of support or guidance. We are not just a charity that works with young people and offers sport and physical activity. We have lots of networks, lots of contacts where we can get advice. If we don't know the answers, we always know someone who will have the answer or can offer that support. So bear that in mind uh, if you have the anxieties eh, about what Brexit will bring when it officially kicks in at 11 o'clock tonight. I would also like to add something is that I personally live with um, regular racist comments from many, many people. Our activities are free of any kind of these behaviors. They are not tolerated. Nobody who behaves badly against someone ba on the basis of their race will be um, not accepted, but definitely they will be punished. and. This is something that is very, very important for me that nobody that comes to our activities will struggle no matter where they come from, what it, their language, religi religion is. And I think it's important to highlight this because um, a lot of people have felt very entitled to make certain comments which yeah. are not okay and they will never be okay. They will never be okay and as Luna says, they will never be tolerated in our charity. And if I can, if I can also share just a thought eh, on a couple of things that Luna's touched on. Eh, she came to work for Achieve More just over three years ago. Mm -hmm. Was it longer? Three seems, and a half. Seems like forever. <laughs> um, and I mean that in the most positive way. And, and has been a, a breath of fresh air and a real inspiration at times. She's helped to professionalise the organisation and bring a different take on the world of marketing that we never had before. And I don't think we would have had that chance. Of course, there's good people eh, who are born and, and, and brought up and educated in Scotland who could have done a job for us, but we had the opportunity to, to engage someone who had a worldly view of life eh, as well as, as the profession, and we have really benefited for that. And it would be very, very sad if that sort of opportunity would eh, be lost to third sector organisations like ours eh, in the future. Another thing is, uh, as Luna says, we have really, really benefited. We as an organisation and, and, and over a hundred young people over the last few years have benefited from uh, the Erasmus Plus project and our links with the uh, partners in uh, Spain, France, Germany, Italy, Portugal, just across Europe. Uh, many of these young people who have benefited from these opportunities to, to travel and, and, and live and work abroad uh, had never been abroad before, didn't even have a passport. It was life-changing uh, for, for many of these young people and there are there is still some uncertainty about what the UK contribution and involvement in Erasmus Plus will be uh, in the future. We are determined, we are possible, that we continue to have that uh, opportunity to, to, to send young people to uh, European countries and receive uh, young people. I think in the last three years, there's over 30 young people from, mm. from European countries have come and lived and worked with us in our holiday camps and the lakes. We also have two young people living in Madrid for the next six months. One young woman uh, living in Cologne uh, for the best part of a year. Experiences, again, that they, they would never have got if it wasn't for our links to Europe and, and projects like Erasmus+. Plus. Fingers crossed that we stay involved, eh, but who knows, it will be a massive loss if that is another eh, thing that, that disappears as a result of 
leaving Europe tonight. Yeah, nobody knows what is going to happen, but we wanted to take the time to highlight that we are here and that we are available and that if anyone has any questions or needs a hug, we are here. And I also think for all of you who are listening and are Scottish people who knows maybe a um, European expat, please take a moment to check on them. It's a difficult time for all of us. Yes. Um, we are facing a lot of uncertainty and nobody would feel right in that circumstance. So just please take, please take the moment. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank we you. We are here for you.